In the nighttime visibility case, the things that are really important are perspective of the person that we are concerned about. The perspective of a driver is going to be different than the perspective of a passenger. The distance of them from the area that we are concerned about. And finally, the lighting and conspicuity of that environment. The conspicuity is basically how conspicuous is somebody in relationship to their background. A lot of accidents happen at night, and we came into this to try to bring science into this spectrum. A common thing that used to be is experts would go out to a scene, set up some cameras, and just kind of go, hey, this looks right, put it on the monitor in front of a jury and have the jury watch it. Human vision is very complex, and that's why you can never just go to a scene and go, look, there's overhead lights, this thing is well lit, you know, the driver's at fault. It's not how well an area is lit. How well are you contrast to your background? You'll be surprised how hidden people can be in even the most well lit crosswalks if the environment is just right. To make it accurate is such a challenge. Most companies don't even try to do it with the hope that nobody knows. And we don't run away from that challenge. When we get hired on a nighttime visibility case, the first thing we want to do is go visit that environment, compare it to photographs taken by police and other investigators. We will then figure out if it's a car, what type of car, headlights, what year, and then if it's a pedestrian, we'll find out what clothing they were wearing, their height, so that we can recreate the situation. We will then go out to the scene with light calibrated cameras with those people and those cars, set the environment up. We will typically take anywhere from eight to 12 million data points. We not only can tell you how much light is coming off their body, but we can break it down to how much is coming off their head, their arms, their legs, any aspect of the human body that may be visible to the driver. We then do the same thing with the background so we can tell you how much light is not coming off the asphalt, curb, mailbox, for drivers, we work really hard to make sure that we put the camera in the exact driving position that the driver would have been in. We don't want to be too high or too low or left or right. We will then put people in marked positions and measure their lighting conditions. At that point, we have now captured all the mathematical data that we need, and the real work happens when you get back in the lab. And that's where math and science come together and create a forensically accurate, mathematically based reconstruction to try to make the quantum leap of how do I show an environment that's not backlit and show it on a backlit monitor in the courtroom and say these two things are mathematically the same. The biggest challenge I have to recreate a nighttime visibility environment and show it to somebody during the daytime. So the jury can see what was available to be seen just as the driver or the pedestrian. Your eyes are doing something completely different at nighttime when you're in a car than what you're doing daytime in a jury box. When we are going to show our product to a jury in a courtroom, we have to calibrate our monitor that's going to be put into that courtroom. So we will take our monitor and put it into a lab that has the same lighting conditions as the courtroom. We will then keep on adjusting the video pixel by pixel if we have to until the data coming off of that monitor in a lit courtroom is identical to what would have been at the scene. So while we can never match it perfectly, the one thing we can match mathematically is how visible was the car or how visible was the person. That is what we do that nobody else wants to do. You have 12 people in a box, and you want all 12 of them to understand the environment in which your client was injured. If you try to verbally describe the lighting conditions, what they were wearing, the speeds of everything, you're gonna have 12 different people vision 12 different things. We use math and science so the jury can literally be in the driver's seat, and they can see what was available to be seen. And when they understand that, they will make just decisions. We understand the science better than anyone currently in the industry. You come to us when you want to make sure it's done right and that the jury gets to see it.